What's up guys? Welcome to Trials Evolution Tuesdays, aka Tits! Today I have a very special, special showcase for you guys. I was I was worried, I was I was a bit sick yesterday, so everything kinda got pushed back. That's why you're getting some late tets, but you know, late tets better than no tets at all. Let's be honest here. And I was talking to Squishy and he was like, hey, I found this guy who makes a pretty cool tracks. So and I was like, cool, what's his name? Past that good. Okay. Immediately, I feel like Squishy's trolling me here because he does that sometimes, especially when it comes to trials. But as it turns out, this guy <laughs> obviously is on that good because he has the most wildest ideas and the craziest assortment of tracks. Now, I know, I know, you're watching this footage and you're thinking, B, what's up? This is like the easiest track in the world. Anybody, could, Shizzle could make a track like this if he wanted to and he's never even touched the editor. But the reason why you're looking at this track is because it's the least, the least complicated one that he has in his catalog. By, by a long shot. Here, let's go, let's, let's dim the lights and make this way more dramatic than it needs to be. First up, we have the heist. This track is as close as you're gonna get to a quick time slash scripted event as you're going to get in a track. And the entire thing is this way. I'm not doing anything other than leaning left and right, and that is all. Which makes sense because there's a lot of scripted events going on here that are obviously very time-based. Speaking of time... Don't think I've ever seen bullet time being used like this, but it's okay, he's not a one-trick pony. Here we go. Chase cam. All right. More explosions. Helicopter chases. Completely realistic, of course, because everything in Trials is realistic, right? Now, I'll be honest, the entire time that I'm running this for the first time, right, as I was making this particular recording, this replay, my jaw is on the floor. I didn't know what to do or say or anything. I was just amazed at all this shit that's going on. And this is the first track that I got from him. Let's try another one. Here we are, cruising on the highway, and the game actually stops me here. I can sit and rev it up, and it's not gonna let me go anywhere. There's a vehicle on the other side of the tracks. Here comes <laughs> suddenly aliens. Right now, watch the car on the other side. Look at that. It's the little things. The little the little touches. Yeah, I, I would not even notice if I wouldn't have been like, why didn't that car drive away? Uh, this guy is getting abducted right in front of him. I would have never thought of that, but he did. So now you're inside of, of the alien ship, the alien battle cruiser or whatever it is. And you have to make your way across several of these platformer-esque style obstacles. And here's the thing, right? The track isn't that hard. It's, it's a 450cc track. You'll, you'll make mistakes the first, second, third time through because, you know, it's, it's a platformer inside of Trials, for fuck's sake. But this part right here coming up, this part actually kind of threw me off the first time. I just kind of zoomed right over this and I got consumed by the fire. But if you go through, I guess they're tempering the glass for these things. And then you see all the UFOs in the back. Like, this is this is kind of like an alright track. Not, I was not quite as impressed with this one as I was, of course, with the heist. The heist totally, like, blew my mind. But still, overall a good track. Here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and just bust this thing out. Now the entire ship is gonna start falling apart. I almost lose my shit right here, I had no idea what to do. Even though I've already done this once. And then somehow we went from way up in the air, way up in the sky, to coming out the, the butthole of the ship, which is now like 200 feet above water. I'm looking for plot holes in a fucking trials track. Something's wrong here. Now I know what you guys are thinking, you're like, wait a minute, where's all the hate, where's all the shitty tracks and everything? Look, PC users, I need to show you guys what you're up against. Last week we had a bunch of weird shit, this week we have kind of the opposite of that. Next week maybe I'll go and tackle a whole bunch of extreme tracks, okay? I'll show you some Murdoch Lock, I'll show you some TBN Sodi. These are people who make, uh, on a consistent basis, tracks that make you just want to fucking throw your controller out the window. And these are the people that you should be looking at to see how far you can push this editor. And then after next week, what you should do is go back and watch all the episodes of Tets again to give yourself a little refresher so you know what to do once you get Trials Gold. Now this particular track from Past That Good has a bit of a story to it. Or rather, it does now. What we have is basically a drug lord's island. We have all of these cliche drug lord necessities scattered throughout the island. And your job is to... Play our artillery. All you have to do is basically take a look around, and when you're ready, you fire off a shot, and you guide it using the left joystick. And that's pretty much it. You uh, see this little, this facility here, this plant. So we... Then we find the radio tower right over here. Fire off a shot again. I feel like I'm watching a clip from Just Cause 2 or something. Of course, we can't forget that gold-plated luxury jumbo jet. 
And of course, no Drug Lord Island devastation would be complete without destroying his entire fleet of one ship. But of course, the Drug Lord strikes back. He has his own <laughs> helicopter. No problem. We blow that shit up. And what happens next is, it's on, I mean, up to this point, it's kind of like, okay, kind of normal, whatever. But the humor right here, just watch. He's out running! Dude. <laughs> How many different parts? First we had the cinematics, and then we had like, the artillery round, and now we're escaping on our neon fucking bike? Come on! This guy is making action movies in trials consistently! So many of them! And of course, bullet time. And then we wrap things up by escaping in our spy sub. No big deal. And if for some reason at this point you're just not impressed, don't worry. He's got this. Welcome to Yuma Valley. Let's go ahead and take a stroll through a couple of these obstacles. Nothing too big, right? Just a junkyard. No problem. Pull into this warehouse here. And all of a sudden, I guess we're sitting here playing video games. What are we playing? We're playing fucking X-Wing. I mean, what was the thought process behind this? Did he sit down and say, yeah, I'm making this track, everything's cool. And then all of a sudden he's just like, eh, let's just go ahead and just put TIE Fighter in the fucking game. What? Or on the flip side, he could have just came up with this entire idea all at once. He could have just been like, you know, I want to make a track where you're going through Yuma Valley. And then you, you, the story is like your guy is going to play, you know, X-Wing in this secret bunker <laughs> warehouse out in the middle of nowhere. And that, what? Like, his name is making more and more sense with every track that I encounter. Ever since the Gecko Fight 20 came out, I've been telling you guys, like, probably every, what, two, three episodes or so of Dead's, like, hey, we need a track where you could go through and get points for doing tricks instead of just riding it all the way across, because the Gecko Fight 20 is, it's a BMX, right? It's, it's got mag wheels on it, uh, as, as an option. But we all know, back in 1987, if you had mag wheels on your, on your bike, you, you were a pro. Like, it was a sign of masculinity among six-year-olds, which is super important when you're, like, six, right? So, of course, he delivers again. He's not just all about cinematics. He's not all about, like, random shit. Uh, he has a Tets logo in the background, which I'll be totally honest, I did not know that was there. I even hit up Squishy and I was like, did you know about this? And he was like, what? No. And so, yeah, th th that's awesome. He obviously watches the show. And so I'm sure he's probably he has a raging boner right now because he's like, oh, Mike B is talking about my tracks on Tets. And he's gonna go to school and he's gonna be like, I love Tets. He's gonna expel. Then he's gonna have all this time to just spend at home just making more random shit. Probably passing that good. But honestly, it's been a long time since I've covered a single track creator here on Tets. And this guy is definitely deserving of it. And I hope you guys are all paying attention. Once again, PC guys, hit to keep on drilling it in. But we're getting down to the wire here and I'm gonna be picking on you guys the first week of release. Don't think you're gonna get some kind of free pass. You've been watching Tets for the past eight months or six or Fucking however many will it donkey you got I have a certain set of standards for you guys So don't fucking let me down if some guy named pass that good is passing all these good ass tracks Then you guys need to at least step to his level if you want to get on the show Just put a Tetz logo in the background <clears throat>